Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Henry Fonda, Donna Michi, and Lynn Barry in The Magnificent Dope. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. If in some future day an archaeologist digs up a certain fill, he may be much puzzled at the adventure described in that bit of celluloid. He may wonder what manner of man it was that lived in America in the dear dead days of the 20th century and the 20th century Fox picture, The Magnificent Dope. Comedy belongs to its own time, so the archaeologist will have no way of knowing that in the autumn of 1942, the magnificent dope went up and down the land, bringing laughter and a good time to an aircraft worker in Buffalo, a farmer in Iowa, a soldier in California, and millions of their contemporaries. Tonight in the radio version of The Magnificent Dope, we present the same three stars who made such a hit in the picture, Don Amici, Henry Fonda, and Lynn Barry. You'll hear Don as Dwight Dawson, a dynamic apostle of success in a few easy lessons and Henry Fonda as the gentleman to whom he wants to sell a little of that success. Naturally, they're both in love with the same girl, played by Lynn Barry. I think you'll like this play, and I think the military part of our audience will like it too. Here's a letter from one soldier who's fighting his second war, a letter he wrote one night in camp right after our curtain went down. He says, Nine o'clock, deep in the heart of Texas and miles and miles from home. Your program tonight was great. We're looking forward to next week's play. And believe it or not, most of us down here are using Lux Toilet Soap. This is my second attempt at being a soldier. The last war in France with no soap at all, and here today in a streamlined army with all the comforts of home. Of course, this soldier may find those who won't agree with him that the army has all the comforts of home. But Lux Toilet Soap is one comfort that doesn't take up much room in a soldier's pack. Now for a sparkling comedy, as the curtain goes up on the first act of The Magnificent Dope, starring Donna Michi as Dwight Dawson, Henry Fonda as Tad Page, and Lynn Barry as Claire Harris. <laughs> From the pages of leading magazines, from billboards throughout the country, a forceful, dynamic personality points a finger at the reader and asks the question... Are you a success? Let Dawson make you one. This is Dwight Dawson, president of the Dawson Institute of Success. According to his advertisement, there is nothing in this world that Dawson cannot do for you. I can give you courage, authority, leadership. Do you want that big pay job? Let Dawson show you how. Learn success from the successful. Learn success from the successful. In his private office, the great man himself is talking on his private phone. Now, all I'm asking, Mr. Collins, is a 90-day extension on my note. Y y yes, I know I'm behind in my payments, but I've been going through a period of expansion. As Benjamin Franklin said, an expanding business is a never-failing one. Why, Mr. Collins, you would be amazed at some of the telegrams I've been receiving. He certainly would. Quiet, Claire. Here, let me read one to you, Mr. Collins. Here, read him this one. Enrollments to date exceedingly disappointing have managed to sign only four. Will you please stop? Here, Mr. Collins, this is from my new branch in Chicago. Quote, enrollments to date exceeding our wildest expectations have already signed 396, unquote. And that's only Chicago. Yeah, Philadelphia can't afford to wire. All right, Mr. Collins, I'll call you first thing in the morning. Goodbye, old man. Well, here's the wire from Boston. They've enrolled six. Six. Will you look at these? Boston, six. Detroit, three. Cleveland, seven. Chicago, four. How'd the Yankees make out? Oh, don't joke, please. You know, Claire, sometimes I actually think you don't believe in my system. I believe in anything that grossed $90,000 last year. Yeah, but that was last year. What can we expect this year? Boston, six. Detroit, three. Yeah, exactly. Why? 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 I'll tell you why. 
Our advertising's no good. Oh, now, darling, let's not go into that again. All I expect of an advertisement is merely an opportunity to have a heart-to-heart talk with the reader in print. My words will do the rest. But that's just the point. You can't tell them anymore, Dwight. You've got to show them. That is nonsense. My method is the best method, and there are a great many people who agree with me. Uh Uh-huh. Six in Boston, three in Detroit. Oh, Oh, Dwight. Come on in, Horace. Dwight, would you like to okay these bills? Put them down. Horace, I leave it to you. What is your opinion of our type of advertising? Arresting, magnetic, vigorous. With the touch of puissance. Oh, I tell you, that stuff went out with wall telephones. Nowadays, talk isn't enough. I have enrolled literally hundreds in the Dawson Institute by merely talking to them. Yeah, what is it? That messenger boy is still waiting. Is there any reply to that last wire? No, I don't... Uh, wait, wait a minute. Send him in. Yes, sir? Claire, I'll show you what words can do. In 60 seconds, this boy will be a student of the Dawson Institute. Now, it stands to reason that if I... Well, 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 good morning, young man. Come on in, come on in, please. Hello. You know, as I saw you through the door just now, I said to myself, I wonder if that young man would like to be a success. Would you? No, well, I'll... What's to prevent you? (laughs) Absolutely nothing. Well, I... Nothing except uh... yourself. We've seen thousands like you, young man. Frightened, frustrated, defeated. Yeah, well, you uh, like to uh, face uh, the world and speak up, but you can't because you're inhibited. You like poise and confidence. Uh, yeah, but now, uh, just uh, what uh, is look. it you're trying to say? Oh, well, uh, I've been trying to tell you. I, I took your course last year. Oh dear. Fine, fine. Well, well, well. Now, now, isn't that uh, that odd? Yeah. As I, yeah, as I looked at you through the door, I said to Miss Harris, I said, there is a young man who has leadership written all over him. Well, goodbye. Don't be discouraged. Remember the first rule of the Dawson system? Never be a defeatist. Last year, I gave you self-confidence. I promise you, you'll get it back. Last year, I gave you 80 bucks. What about getting that back? Oh, it's people like that that make my work so difficult. Yes, lazy, shiftless. Well, those are the ones you've got to sell. You can't judge by a boy like that. He's imbecilic, stupid. Well, he may be stupid, but he just gave me an idea. You know who our next customer is? The biggest failure in the United States. The biggest fa- Who's that? Friend of yours, Claire? I don't know who he is. We're going to find him. We're going to run a nationwide contest. Why... Why, think of the free publicity we'll get. It's something new, something different. A contest for the greatest failure. Yeah, it might have possibility. Yes. Now, after we find our failure, we put him through the course, follow him every step of the way with photographs, interviews, magazine articles, Mm -hmm. and when he comes out the other end of the line of success, everybody will know about the Dawson Institute. Mm Mm-hmm. Darling, I think we've hit on something. Uh, there's only one thing wrong, that word failure. That's bad psychology. Very true. Yeah, I think the, uh, let's see, ah, the phrase ideal subject would be better. The Dawson Ideal Subject Contest. We'll put it in the ads. Newspaper. Billboard. On the radio. And the Ideal Subject Contest is open to every man and woman in the United States. Is it worth entering? Hmm? Just listen to this. The first prize is $500 in cash and a free course of study in the Dawson Institute of Success. All you have to do is tell us in 50 words a little bit about yourself. How old you are, where you live, what sort of work you do, and what your ambitions are. That's all. (laughs) Simple, isn't it? Of course. Now, don't forget and don't delay. Send in your entry today to Dwight Dawson. Dear Dawson Institute, I'm a short order cook. Dear gentlemen, I'm very ambitious and very neat with it. At present, I'm serving the short wrap in the state can, but when I'm part... Dear gentlemen... Gents. Dear Institute... Sirs or ladies... Dear sirs, since I am only allowed 50 words, I guess Dad! we'll... Dad! Oh, Dad! Yes, Ma? Party here wants to rent a boat, Dad. Well, be right there, Ma, writing a letter. Better hurry! Yeah, just gonna read it over once. Dear sirs... Since I'm only allowed 50 words, I guess we'll have to take a few shortcuts. I don't have to tell you my name. You'll find that at the bottom of the page. And the return address on the envelope will tell you where I live. Now, what do I do for a living? I've got a few rowboats that people go fishing in, so I guess you could call me a boat renter outer. Since there's fishing only in the summer, I don't do much during the winter except sit around and wait for the summer again. (laughs) Now, about my ambition... If I've got any, it's just to keep on doing what I'm doing and living the way I'm living. Sincerely yours, Thaddeus Winship Page. And living the way I'm living. Sincerely yours, Thaddeus Winship Page. 
Well, what do you think of that one, Dwight? I don't believe it. Unbelievable. And he's just as good in person. Take a look at this picture. Let me see it. Oh, look at that young, healthy, lazy, shiftless. Phlegmatic, no ambition, indifferent, perfect. Uh, imagine, he does nothing and all he wants is to go on doing it. Horace, what's your decision? Well, if I may use the jargon of the street, I would say that Mr. Page is a jerk. Jerk. Absolutely right. Then we're all agreed he's the winner of the Dawson Ideal Subject Contest. Claire, send him a wire. Horace, have the paper stand by. Have 20 photographers here in the office the day the jerk arrives. Just one more. That's enough. Give us a smile here. All right, all right. Take it easy, boys. You'll all get your pictures. Smile, Mr. Page. Yeah, certainly. There we are. Thanks, Mr. Page. Oh, you're welcome. I hope that... Oh, uh, one more. Oh, certainly. Okay, fellas, I think that does it. Thanks for coming up. Oh, we'll oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Page, you did nobly. You certainly did. <laughs> I'm afraid I blinked a little in some of those pictures. Come on, come on, sit down, Mr. Page. Sit down, sit down right here. Can I, can I get you a little drink, huh? Oh, no, thanks. My head's spinning enough as it is. Oh, it's very funny. <laughs> Say, are we all through? That's the works. Well, I sure want to thank you for the check. It'll come in handy. We're raising money up home for a fire engine. Fire engine? Well, isn't that nice? Nice. Uh, nice, nice, yes, yes. Oh, it was sure nice to have met both of you. If you ever come up my way, just drop in. Goodbye. Oh, wait a minute. I, uh, I don't quite understand. Were you, were you going someplace, Mr. Page? Sure. Home. Of course, not right away. I can't get a train till morning. Well, what about the course? Huh? What course? What course? Now, look, Mr. Page, when you entered this contest, do you remember what the advertisement said? Uh-huh. It said, write 50 words about yourself and win $500. And a free course of study in the Dawson Institute. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. But it didn't say I had to take the course, did it? No, but we just assumed that you'd be only, only too glad to take it. Oh, no. You see, I just entered the contest to raise the money for the fire engine. Yeah, uh, but, 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 Mr. Page, you, you, you don't realize what I can do for you. Why, I can make you a leader of business, a captain of industry, the president of a bank. You can? I certainly can, and I can do it all in eight short weeks. Eight weeks? Think of that. It's amazing, isn't it? It sure is. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Uh, Mr. Page. <laughs> Mr. Page, you, you can't afford to turn this down. Why, you owe this to yourself. Well, maybe so, but I don't like to put you to any trouble. Oh, why, it's no trouble at why, all. Why, certainly not. Why, this is something that can change your entire life. Oh, I don't think I'd like that. I, I kind of like the way I'm living. I'm pretty happy. How can you be? Oh, now, Miss Harris, that's, that's like asking a person how he can like rutabagas. All I know is I wake up in the morning happy, I go to bed at night happy. I'm just happy. Oh, Mr. Page, you're merely deceiving yourself. Why, you, you, you have no position, no authority, no influence. Why, you have practically nothing. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Mom and I got a nice house, a lot of friends. I got a car, four good tires. Yeah, but, but you must rouse yourself, drive yourself. Oh, personally, I never figured that way. Yeah, well, tell me how you do figure, Mr. Page. I'd certainly like to know. Well... Number one, you don't live forever, so there's not much use taking things too hard. Number two, shrouds don't have pockets, so it's kind of silly making too much money. Number three, well, being a success is a job in itself. It, it wouldn't give me time to do the things I like to do, like reading or sitting in a rowboat out in the lake, just thinking. But that's a lazy man's philosophy. I know it. I'm lazy. Well, I'll say goodbye. Oh, but you can't leave yet. Now, 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 Miss Harris, just a minute. If Mr. Page doesn't want to take the course, why, that's all there is to it. As Benjamin Franklin said, let people do what they want. What are you talking... But talk I do feel kind of guilty. If you don't take the course, Mr. Page, you won't be receiving everything that's coming to you. Oh, I don't mind. I'm satisfied. Ah, I have it. I know how to make it up to you tonight. I want you to see New York at my expense. Miss Harris will show you around, and I promise you, you'll never find a more attractive guide. Oh, but Well, you... I'm sure of that. I'd certainly like that if it's all right with Miss Harris. Why, yes, I, I'd be delighted. Splendid! Well, just a moment. I've got to get my hat outside. Oh, yes. Yeah. Excuse me just a minute, Mr. Page. I'll be right back. Sure, I got nothing to do. Claire. Don't tell me what's going on. Just let me guess. Listen, I've got an idea. Some idea. You can't let him get away. I know that, but we're not going to change his mind by arguing with him. The first thing we got to do is make him dissatisfied with the way he's been living, and the best way to do that is to show him New York from, from Avenue A to the zoo. By 5 o'clock tomorrow morning, he won't even want to look at Sleepy Hollow again. Oh, that's fine. But why am I elected? Oh, darling, if he stays, we'll be on a honeymoon in three months. 
I'll take you to Guatemala. Oh, it is wonderful down there. You lie in bed, you reach out the window and pick yourself an orchid. Oh, that's the kind of gardening I like. Here, come on, darling, kiss me. I'd like. Yeah, now, come on, come on, get your hat, get your hat. Hello, hello, uh, is that you, Claire? Hello. Claire, uh, how did you do last night? I don't know, Dwight. Well, uh, is there still any hope? I don't know. At 2 o'clock this morning, it was absolutely not. Oh. At 3, it was, well, it might be all right for some people. At 4, it was maybe. And at 5... Yeah? It was still maybe. Hello? Listen, I'm talking long hello? distance to... Oh, hello, Ma. This is Tad. Hello, son. Ma, I'm still in New York. I called to tell you I'm going to stay down here for a while. You are? What's her name, son? <laughs> I can't fool you, can I? Her name's Claire Harris. You'd be crazy about her. Why, that's fine. And Mr. Dawson's going to pay all my expenses. Does that mean you have to take that course he gives? Well, I got to go to his classes, but I don't have to listen. Fine, son, fine. <laughs> Hello, darling. Where have you been? Trying to get rid of a splitting headache. Oh. Has Johnny Appleseed shown up yet? Our worries are over. He's in class right now. Good. Good night, Mr. Dawson. Oh, uh, are you leaving already, sir? Yes, I, I, I've changed my mind. I don't think I'll take the course. Oh, now, now, come, 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 come. Remember what Benjamin Franklin always said, never say no until you've tried something twice. Uh, no, thanks. I, I gotta be going. Claire, that's the fifth one who's left tonight. We've never had anything like this happen before. There's something else you've never had before. Mr. Page, you'd better take a look in that class. Come on. Already a success. You don't have to take this course. But Mr. Mr. Dawson says I'm not a go-getter. Listen, I've known a lot of go-getters. I've been Paul Bear at about ten of them. They're just so darn busy going and getting, they didn't have time to breathe. Oh, say, what is this? You've got a home, a wife you like, a family that likes you. What more can you ask for? Two wives? Two families? <laughs> My golly, you're right. It's sabotage. That's what it is, sabotage. He's learning how to influence people awful fast. Get him out of here. Get him out. Where will I take him? I don't care. Take him, take him for a walk. Go sit in the park, but get him out of that class. <laughs> This is what I like. Just sitting. Nice, isn't it? Oh, I give up. I guess you were just born lazy. Oh, oh, no. I've got no respect for anybody who was born lazy. That's like being born a king. I had to develop it. It took me a long time to get where I am. <laughs> oh, that must have been a happy day for your mother when you arrived at that conclusion. Yes and no. You see, I had pneumonia. I was awful sick. They had my new suit laid out and everything. Right then, I said to myself, there's nothing like being alive. So when I got better, I just started living. Nothing else, just living. Now I get pneumonia regularly, twice a year. What? Oh, only pretend, of course, but then it all comes back to me, and I just get up and go on living again. But if, if everybody lived like that, then nothing would ever be accomplished. Oh, I wouldn't say that. There's lots oh, of... Oh, dear. Oh, you got a headache? A beauty. Oh, that's too bad. I'll fix it for you. Oh, now, wait a minute. You're not one of those people that tell me to look the other way, then twist my head off, are you? Oh, it's simple. Now, just lean back and relax. That's fine. Now, I'm going to loosen up the neck muscles. Now, just close your eyes and imagine your head's the second hand on a watch and just let it go round and round slowly. Like this? That's it. Just keep it going round. Round and round. <laughs> are you sure it works? This is what an aspirin does when it's got a headache. <laughs> now, the next thing is to imagine a nice, quiet lake with a soft blue sky. Do you mind a few ducks flying around? Not if they're not flying too fast. Okay. Take it easy, ducks. <laughs> now then, what were we talking about before? Oh, about people like you slowing down the wheels of progress. Oh, that's right. Well, you're all wrong. Did you ever stop to think what the world owes to the lazy man? Well, just think back to a long time ago when people used to live in caves. What did they do when they wanted a drink of water? Oh, they walked down to the river. That's right. But sometimes the river was a mile or two away. 
Now, the go-getter, he didn't mind walking, but there was one fella, he was awful lazy. He didn't like that running back and forth. So what did he do? He figured out a way to bring back a whole day's supply at one crack. He invented a bucket. Well, today we've got pots and pans and glasses and bathtubs, but it all started with that bucket. Well, maybe so. And what about the boys that built the pyramids? They used to load those big, heavy stones on a sort of flat bottom sled and then break their backs pulling it. But there was one lazy guy in that road gang, and he said, Look, fellas, this is too much work. Well, if it wasn't for that no-good lazy lout, you wouldn't have wheels. Then you wouldn't have automobiles or trains or... Miss Harris? Miss Harris, are you asleep? Miss Harris? Oh. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Page. I'm listening. Oh, I didn't say anything. Oh, yes, you were... You were talking about the pyramids. Oh, that was an hour ago. You've been asleep. I have. Well, what have you been doing? Just looking at you. Why, I, I can't understand it. I, I've never dozed off like that before. You've never been relaxed before. How's your headache? Why, it's gone. Say, that revolving door technique really works, doesn't it? Thanks, Mr. Page. Well, after sleeping on my shoulder for an hour, I think we could dispense with a Mr. Page, don't you? All right. Thanks, Thaddeus. Oh, that's worse. <laughs> Try Tad. Thanks, Tad. That's better. Come on. You can walk me home if you like. Well, what I mean is, you should work hard and get ahead so you can give yourself security. But I... Oh, is this your house? Yes, I have an apartment here. Oh, this is nice. And what about your mother? Wouldn't you like to be able to give her all the things she's wanted? She's got them. But... But someday you, you might meet a girl you like. Yeah, yes, I might. Well, how's she going to feel about it? Well, I've been wondering. You mean you have met somebody? Uh-huh. Are you in love with her? Yep, sure am. Somebody back home? Uh, yes. Uh, her name's, uh, Hazel. Hazel. She's the loveliest thing I've ever bumped up against. Well, someday you must tell me more about Hazel. Well, someday I will. Well, good night, Tad. Night, Claire. Claire, I've been worried about you. Where have you been, darling? Finding out if Achilles had a heel. Well, has he? Uh-huh. Some hometown belle by the name of Hazel. Love, of course. Why didn't I think of that before? The greatest driving force the world has ever known. Sure, sure. Just give him lecture 37 about working and winning for the little woman and you'll have him right in a sack. Well, you sound as if you thought I were taking advantage of him. Oh, no, it's not that. It's, it's just that I found out something tonight. We didn't pick the biggest failure. We picked the happiest guy in the United States. Well, that's fine. With a little success, he'd be twice as happy. <laughs> well, I hope so. He's such a sweet, honest jokel, I'd, I'd hate to feel we changed him. Ah, oh, where he's concerned, any changes for the better. Look, I talked to Collins at the bank this morning. He's going to give me 90 days more on that note on one condition, that we keep on showing new enrollments. So we've got to do everything in our power to see... Hey, what are you doing? Huh? What do you mean? Rolling your head around like that. Want to get sick to your stomach? Now stop it. <laughs> I'm just relaxing. It's wonderful. You ought to try it. Just... Just close your eyes and imagine your head's a second hand on a watch and let it go around and around slowly. Like, uh, like this? That's it. Yeah. Now, now think of a quiet lake with a soft blue sky and no one around for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. This is the silliest thing that ever happened to me. In just a few moments, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Henry Fonda, Donna Michi, and Lynn Barry, will return in Act Two of The Magnificent Dope. And now, on a train, a young man in uniform. Opposite him, a girl who just boarded the train at the last station. Neither is saying a word, but this is about what they're thinking. 
Gosh, you're pretty. Well, you're sort of cute. I always did go for a peaches and cream complexion. Thank goodness I'm wearing my new blue hat and that I haven't been neglecting my active lather facials with Lux soap. It's true. There's something quite irresistible about a lovely Lux soap complexion. Skin that's soft and fresh looking makes instant appeal. So it's smart to give your complexion the right care. Care that helps keep it beautifully smooth and soft. Now here's the gentle Lux soap care famous screen stars use for their million dollar complexions. This is Hollywood's active lather facial. Pat the creamy Lux soap lather lightly in. Rinse with warm water, then with cool. And then pat, pat gently to dry with a towel. Yes, screen stars say they never neglect this daily beauty facial because it gives delicate skin gentle protecting care it needs. It's Lux Soap's active lather that does the trick. Remove stale cosmetics, every trace of dust and dirt in a twinkling. You'll love this creamy, generous lather. Its touch on the skin is like a caress. Try Hollywood's Beauty Facial for 30 days. You'll find this care a wonderful aid in keeping your complexion smooth and soft, lovely to look at and to touch. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act two of The Magnificent Dope. Starring Henry Fonda as Tad Page, Donna Michi as Dwight Dawson, and Lynn Barry as Claire Harris. Tad Page, the magnificent dope, is a changed man. To impress Claire, he's plunged headfirst into the Dawson success course. He has a new press suit. He wears a tie. He's learning to meet and greet people. Hello. An evening session is just over. Mr. Dawson stands at the door, bidding his students good night. Good night, good night. Especially good tonight, Miss Grey Watts. Good night, good night. Well, of course, might as well turn out the lights, I guess. A very successful session, don't you think? Yes, very, very. Uh, by the way, though, watch Mr. Malaki's laugh. It seemed a little bit forced to me, perhaps a little less <laughs> and a little more ha-ha-ha. <laughs> yes, I felt that myself. Yeah, uh, wait a minute. Who's that over there? It looks like Mr. Page. Yes, it, uh, uh, Mr. Page, you waiting to see me? No. No, I was just sitting and thinking. Why, is there, uh, anything wrong, Mr. Page? Well, uh, I don't think I'm going to take the course after all. Oh, now, now, come, 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 uh, come, Mr. Page. You're, you're just discouraged because you were a little nervous tonight. Oh, it's not that. I, I've lost my incentive. You see, the reason I changed was because there's someone I'm in love with. Yes, yes, I, I know about that. Miss Harris told me. Uh, uh, Hazel's her name. Isn't it a beautiful name? Beautiful. Well, there isn't any Hazel. That is, Miss Harris is really Hazel, only she doesn't know it. What? Well, I didn't have nerve enough to tell her, so I just made up a name. Do you... Do you mean you're, you're in love with Miss Harris? Bet I am. But you, you haven't told her. No, I couldn't. You see, I, I found out it's hopeless. She likes somebody else. Oh, well, uh, did she say who? No. Well, well, I'm, uh, I, uh, I certainly am glad you talked this over with me first. Yes, why, why, there's uh, absolutely no reason to be downhearted. It, it just means that you've got to double your efforts. But if she's fond of somebody Mr. else... Mr. Page, you have absolutely no worries whatsoever. I happen to know this other man. You do? Certainly. What's he like? Why, he's, uh, he, he's short, he, he's fat, he has lots of double chins, he's really? practically no hair, he's a ghoul. Absolutely. But she still loves him, though. Believe me, Mr. Page, believe me, she doesn't. Why, why, this man is from Hoboken. She rarely sees him. Well, I... Uh... I wouldn't want to come between two people. Mr. Page, did Mark Anthony step aside and let Caesar take Cleopatra? Certainly not. Did Romeo stand aside and let Juliet run away with Tybalt? No, not at all, Mr. Page. No. As Benjamin Franklin so wisely said, 
None but the brave deserve the fair. Exactly. It means that you've got to work hard and prove to her that you're the better man, but you must apply yourself. You must use all your, your personality. Well, all right. That's fine. If you say so. I certainly do. Chin up. The aggressor always, Mr. Page, and laugh. Always a big laugh. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> Ah, good evening, dear. Happy birthday, darling. Come on, lean down here. Mm -hmm. You know, that makes being 33 worthwhile. How many? <laughs> that last kiss took five years <laughs> off my life. Well, come on, get your coat. We're going out and celebrate. Oh, no. You're staying here. I'm giving you a surprise party. A surprise party? Yes, I had to. Horace and the bunch wanted to do something for you. Oh, oh, I, uh, I thought we'd go out someplace, just the two of us. Oh, I'd love to, darling, but it was just one of those things I couldn't get out of. Well, I'm glad you warned me. Now when the others arrive, I can say, my, isn't this wonderful, instead of what are you doing here? <laughs> say, can you stand a little good news? Yeah, I certainly can. Well, I arranged with Peak Magazine to run an eight-page spread on our boy Wonder. Peak Magazine? Why, that is the nicest present I've had today. Why, uh, why, they have a circulation of three million. Which means a reading public of ten million. Ten million? They want to treat it in the Horatio Alger manner. Small town boy makes good in the big city with the help of Dawson. Oh, that's great. But the story's got to have a big finish. Just graduating isn't enough. He's got to have a job. Well, of course, of course. He'll get a job as soon as he graduates. All my students do. Yes, but he doesn't graduate for ten days, and Pete goes to press on Thursday. Oh, well, then we've got to do something immediately. Huh? Yeah, I did, this morning. What? I got him a job with Security Light. Third district manager in charge of sales. Why, that's marvelous. Oh, he's just a junior salesman. The title's something I cooked up. Now, shall we have a drink? Yeah. Say, I'll, uh, I'll bet that insurance company was tickled to death to get a Dawson-trained man, huh? Well, they didn't exactly declare a holiday. Mm. <laughs> Here, will you open this, dear? Oh, champagne, huh? You know, I was, uh, I was just thinking, if 10 million people see it, surely one out of every 2,000 will want to take the course. That is 5,000 students. And at $80 a head, that is $400,000. Darling, I love you. Well, you might at least take a breath before, darling, I love you. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, sweetheart. I, I, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> what do we drink to? To success. Oh, no. Champagne and business don't go together. To our honeymoon in Guatemala. Well, that's what I meant, success to us, to Guatemala. <laughs> Oh, oh, there they are. Now, don't forget to look surprised. How's this? Well, for goodness sake. That'll do. Surprise! <laughs> well, for... Well, for goodness sake, this is a surprise. Is it? Is it? Yes. What did I tell you? Hello, Horace. Well, for goodness sake. Uh, hello, Louise. How are you, Tom? Well, well, happy birthday, Dwight. Thank you, thank you, Horace. Listen, we're getting an eight-page spread in peak. Peak? That's it. Why, that's marvelous. It's wonderful. Provided he doesn't find out that you're the man from Hoboken. Oh, don't worry. Well, it was awfully close the other night when Claire called you darling. Yeah. It's lucky he didn't hear it. Look, Horace, Horace, let's forget about Mr. Page for tonight. Let's just have a good time. Uh -huh. I feel wonderful. <laughs> Surprise, Mr. Dawson. Happy birthday. Well, thank you very much. Well... Well, for goodness sake. Hello, Ted. Oh, good evening, Claire. My, you look handsome. I, I, I didn't know. Thank it. you. Just put your hat in the bedroom. Oh, thank you very much. Well, for goodness sake. That's enough surprise, dear. Don't overdo it. Well, I, I didn't I didn't expect to see him here. Well, he leads a pretty lonely life, and I, I thought it would do him good to get out and meet people and find out about things. Yeah, find out about things, yeah. I'd better go introduce him around. Mm. Right. Dwight, this is terrible. Quiet, quiet. Come on out in the hall. Dwight, he's sure to hear somebody say something about you and Claire. We can't let him. We've got to keep everybody from talking. Well, my wife's here. She hasn't stopped talking in 20 years. Oh, <laughs> we can't let her get started. We've got to keep them all occupied. I know. We'll entertain them. You want me to go home, get my mandolin? No, uh, no. Oh. No, I'll, I'll think of something. I've, uh, I've got to think of something. <laughs> Little baby love short and short and Mammy's little baby love short and friend. Mammy's little baby love short and short and Mammy's little baby love short and friend. Wait, 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 wait,
Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, that was you. fine, Mr. Dawson. Oh, thank you, Mr. Page. Oh, Claire, dear. Yes, Mrs. Hunter? Claire, I've got a very personal question. I was just wondering when you and Dwight... Oh, no, I... Mammy, little baby love short men. Little baby love short men. Dwight, for heaven's... Little baby love short men, short men. Little baby love short men. Dwight! Put on the skillet. Dwight, Put on... stop! Why, uh... Uh, what, what's the matter? I think Mammy's little baby's had enough shopping bread for tonight. Don't y'all think he's liable to get sick? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Mrs. Hunter, why don't you sing? Oh, now, Dry, I wanted to know when you and Claire... Oh, come on, come on and sing. Come on, come Go on. Go ahead, Mama. Sure, sure. Dry, will you please stop? Yeah, all right, all right. I, uh, I was just... Uh, I tell you, what, why don't we listen to the radio? The Green Shadow is on. Wouldn't that be fun? Not a great deal, no. Now, look, Elsa Maxwell, why don't you just relax and let people do what they want? Well, uh, sure. What's the matter with you tonight? You're jumping all over the place. Well, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just just happy. That's, uh, champagne, everybody. Oh, Come champagne. on, champagne. Oh, Here you are, Mrs. Hunter. Here you are, Mr. Page. Oh, thank you. Are you enjoying yourself, Tad? Oh, I sure am. Say, who are those people over there I was talking to? Oh, they're the Northrops. Mr. Dawson met them on a trip to Guatemala. Uh, Claire. Oh, I've always wanted to go to Guatemala. Uh, Claire. So have I, and it looks like I'll finally get there. Uh, Claire, listen. Planning a trip? Oh, I guess you don't know. No, listen. You see, in about three weeks, Mr. No! Dawson... No, ma'am, his little baby loves your friends. Why will you please, please stop that? Food, everybody, food! Ma'am, baby loves your friends. Well, that's fine, Mr. Peters. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, it's all set, Dwight. You can call Mr. Page and tell him he starts selling insurance tomorrow. Ah, that's excellent. Excellent. Why, if he can sell a couple of small policies using the Dawson method, he'll be convinced in a minute. It'll make him feel that he's accomplished something. You know, I hope this doesn't hurt him in any way. I've seen a qu quite a bit of him these last weeks, taking pictures and interviews, and I've gotten to know him pretty well. He's a very sweet guy. Oh, now, He's... darling, darling, this can't possibly hurt him. Leave the whole thing to me. We're just inches from our goal now, and we can't afford to let anything stop us. Oh, well, all right. Don't you worry. This insurance job will be his passport to prosperity, his visa to success, the Dawson way. <laughs> Howdy, Mr. Rindle. My name is Page, Tad Page. Well? I'm certainly pleased to meet you. I'm very busy, man. That reminds me of a very funny story. Did you hear what one cricket said to the other cricket the first time they met? <laughs> now, listen. Well, good laugh. Never heard any of us. That's what I always say. Listen, what do you well, want? I'm from the Security Life Insurance Company. I don't company, want any. But won't you let me tell you I that? I said I don't want but any. You... Out. Beat it. Go on. How do you do? I'm I don't for... need the insurance. Well, excuse me. I can't afford it. Well, think of your children. I have no children. Insurance I'm is... single. But... It costs too much. But... I, I've got all I want. But... No. 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 Oh. And that's all I get, Mr. Dawson. No, no, no. I, I can't sell anybody. Now, now, now. You mustn't be discouraged. You must have faith in the Dawson method. That's it. Faith, Mr. Page. Yes, but I just can't sell insurance. Oh, that is nonsense. You can do it just as well as the next man if you just apply yourself. Well, I've been applying, but I haven't been selling. Now, wait. Let's get to the bottom of this. What seems to be the difficulty, Mr. Page? What seems to be the difficulty? Mm, nothing, except nobody wants to buy insurance from me. Now, what do they say to you? I told you, they say no. Why, that is mere evasion. You must never take no for an answer. Impress upon them the importance of insurance. Why, certainly, and when they die, what's to become of their dependents? Well, I ask them that, but they've got a wonderful answer. They say, I haven't got any dependents. Aha, then you should say to them, Mr. Smith, in a few short years, you will have a dependent. A very old man will be dependent upon you, and that man will be yourself. Say, that's right. I never thought of that. And in the meantime, they'll be protecting those courageous, lovely women who have stood by them all these years, their wives. Well, a lot of men say their wives don't believe in insurance. Mr. Page, wives seldom believe in insurance, but widows always do. <laughs> well, all right, I'll try again. That's it, that's it, that's it. Go out and face the business world with confidence and assurance. And don't forget Benjamin Franklin's advice. Above all things... Be decisive. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Page. Goodbye. Goodbye. Dwight, you are wonderful. Absolutely nothing to it, Horace. Just the Dawson method applied to a little situation. Excuse me. 
Uh, yes, Mr. Bates. Have you gentlemen ever thought about life insurance? What? Now, we have an endowment life income policy that's more than just protection. Look at this. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're, you're, you're not trying to sell us insurance. Do you realize the percentage of men who die under 50 not caring for their loved ones? But I have no loved ones. I'm not married. I have no dependents. But in a few short years, you will have a dependent. An old man will be dependent on you, and that man will be yourself. Well, now, wait. And you, Mr. Hunter, you might die any day I, now. I feel all Are right. Are you I... going to leave your wife and children without anything? But my wife doesn't believe in it. Wives anything. seldom believe in insurance, Mr. Hunter, but widows always do. Now, gentlemen, suppose both of you die tomorrow. Now, just a minute, just a minute. Suppose you have an accident. Why, if you lose an ear in one hand, we pay you $92.64 a month. Now, wait. Of course, we have other combinations to pay much more. For instance, if you lost one hand, one eye, and one foot, you're sitting pretty. <laughs> then, Mr. Dawson, Wait, we... wait, stop. All right, Mr. Page, you've convinced oh, me. Oh, that's great. And Mr. Hunter? Uh, me too, yes, Oh, me that's too. fine. I'll just get my order, Blank. Now, stay right here. I'll be back in two minutes. Don't go away now. Don't go away. Oh. Yeah. And all I said was, what seems to be the difficulty, Mr. Page? <laughs> After a brief intermission, Donna Michi, Henry Fonda, and Lynn Barry will bring us Act Three of The Magnificent Dope. Remember this song? Tiptoe through the tulips by the window, that is where I'll be. Come tiptoe through the tulips with me. Well, Sally, that song calls up a pretty picture. I guess a garden full of tulips is about as pretty a sight as you could think of. A real rainbow of color. That's why flower lovers everywhere are sending in for our Lux and Lux Toilet Soap offer of choice tulip bulbs, Sally. I've sent for mine. I'm going to grow them indoors in pots so they'll bloom in time for Easter. It's easy because exact planting instructions come with the bulbs. Yes, it's very easy to grow these beautiful tulips indoors or out. And here's how to get them. For every ten bulbs you wish, send the wrapper from a cake of Lux Toilet Soap or the opening tab from a box of Lux Flakes with 25 cents in coin, to Lux Rainbow Garden, Box 1, New York City. Be sure to send your name and address. You'll want to send for more than one set because these are no ordinary bulbs. They're full size and first quality from one of the oldest and best known growers in the country. Oh, and the colors are heavenly. They're glorious shades of scarlet and cerise and sunny yellow and lovely pastel pink and lavender. And many other unusual shades. These gorgeous blooms will grow up to two and a half feet high and flower again year after year. Even if you live in a city apartment, you'll want them. They can be grown in pots indoors. And now I'll repeat what you do to get them. For every set of ten bulbs you wish, send 25 cents in coin, no stamps please, and the wrapper from a cake of Lux toilet soap or opening tab from a box of Lux flakes to Lux Rainbow Garden, Box 1, New York City. Wrap coin and paper carefully. Be sure to include your name and address. Your dealer has handy order blanks if you wish them. Please allow at least two weeks for your bulbs to reach you. An illustrated leaflet of planting directions comes with each set. The quantity is limited, so don't delay. Remember, fall is the time for planting your Lux Rainbow Garden. This offer is good only in the United States. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. The curtain rises on the third act of The Magnificent Dope. Changing Tad Page the mouse into Tad Page the lion, the Dawson Institute has caught said lion by the tail and can't let go. The lion has just succeeded in selling Mr. Dawson an insurance policy. Something tells me if he goes around selling like that, he's going to need some insurance himself. He'll pick up the prettiest collection of black eyes you've ever seen. The trouble is that after the first black eye, he may get discouraged again and quit. Well, I can't keep on buying policies every day. I just can't do it. Somebody's got to buy them. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mm. What about Frank Mitchell? The millionaire? Sure. He could help us out. We'll let Paige sell him a How do you know he'll do it? Don't argue. Get him on the phone. Arrange an appointment. And it's a foolproof plan for old age independence, Mr. Mitchell, combined with adequate life insurance. And all it'll cost you is fifty-one fifty per thousand. Uh-huh. That sounds reasonable enough, Mr. Page. I've been considering life insurance for some time. You mean you'll take some, Mr. Mitchell? Yes. You can write me out a policy for two hundred and fifty thousand. Well, thank you, Mr. Mitchell. I 
Did... Did you say 250000 Yes. That's what I thought you said. As soon as you have the policy made out, Mr. Pease, just drop in. Oh, all right, I will, and thanks very much, Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> goodbye, sir, and thank you, and, oh, goodbye. Uh, don't forget your hat, Mr. Pease. Oh, yes, my hat. And your briefcase. Oh, yes, my briefcase. Oh, goodbye, goodbye. Thank you, sir. There you are, Horace. Just listen to this. Dawson Institute Ideal Subject Makes Good. Pictured right shows Tad Page writing quarter-million-dollar insurance policy for Frank M. Mitchell. I don't understand. How did you ever manage it? Oh, wake up, Horace. Mitchell's blood pressure is higher than a kite. He's been turned down by 18 insurance companies in the last six years. But the physical examination, you'll have to pass a physical. That takes place tomorrow. The magazine is out today. Oh. Oh! At last, the Dawson Institute is receiving the publicity it deserves. Just look at this. It's wonderful. Horace, it's more than wonderful. It's sensational. Why, every frustrated, downtrodden man in the United States will want to follow in this boy's footsteps. Well, I'm certainly glad it's out. Now you can clear up about the man from Hoboken. Oh, yes, yes. I'm uh, going to tell Mr. Page about it tonight. I've got a call in for him now. And Claire, um, does she know about Mitchell's blood pressure? No, no, that's, uh, that's something we'll meet when we get to it. Uh, yes. I can't reach Mr. Page, sir. The hotel says he's out. Where? Did he leave any message? Well, uh, yes, sir, but it's the strangest thing. Well, where is he? Well, the desk clerk says he went out to buy a fire engine. Well, Claire, what do you think? Isn't it a beauty? Oh, yes, but have you bought this? Well, practically. You remember I told you we needed a fire engine up home. Well, this is it. Oh. You won't go wrong with this little number, sir. I've sold hundreds of them. Never a complaint. Excuse me. I'll get that phone. Uh, Claire, the reason I wanted you to come down was... Well, you see, on that Mitchell policy, my commission's going to be about $7,500. Oh, Ted, that's wonderful. Well, I was figuring on using it for a nest egg for Hazel and me, but we need an engine like this pretty bad, so I was wondering if you thought Hazel'd mind if I put in a few thousand. Oh, of course not. From what you've told me about her, I don't think she'd care if you spent the whole business. You, you really mean that? Well, the money isn't important. After all, you've proven that you love her enough to work for her. That's all that matters. Well, I guess that settles it then. Well, Mr. Page, have you made up your mind? I sure have. I'm going to pay cash for it, Mr. Morton. Cash? Say, what is this job, Mr. Morton? 175 horsepower? Uh, 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 yes, ma'am. Uh, 185, to be exact. Hmm. The whole Siamese is into two one and a halfs, doesn't it? That's good. Well, how, how do you know so much about these things? Oh, my uncle was the chief up in Utica when I was a kid. Well, can you imagine? So you like fire engines, too? Sure. Wherever there's smoke, you'll find me in LaGuardia. <laughs> what do you know, Mr. Morton? I'll probably be in tomorrow afternoon with the money. All right, Mr. Page. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, does a hat go with it? A fire hat? A fire hat? Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I think we can arrange that. Okay, then the deal's still on. <clears throat> you know, I can't get over it. You like them fire engines. Does Hazel like them? Oh, yeah, she loves them. That's good. Well, a lot's happened in the last few weeks, hasn't it? Sure has. Getting a job, selling a big policy... I got to admit, and Mr. Dawson's approach certainly works, doesn't it? Well, uh, yes, it, it works all right. And I think I've gotten far enough along to ask Hazel to marry me, don't you? Oh, I had an idea it was all set. No, you see, well, she's always thought I was sort of a loafer, so I figured that I'd have a much better chance if I waited until I had something to offer her besides just promises. Well, that's not a bad technique. You really think she'll listen to me now? Of course she will. All right. I'll tell her then. Hazel, I love you. You... What did you say? Don't you see there never was a Hazel? I'd have told you before, but as I said, I, I thought if I waited, I, I might sweep her off her feet. Oh, but... Oh. What's the matter? Well, I'm... I'm swept, that's all. Ever since that first day I arrived, I've wanted you more than I've ever wanted anything in all my life. By nature, I'm not a hard worker, but if you want me to, I'll work eight hours a day. I'll be the... Oh, Ted, don't. I... Oh, I know it's sudden, but look, I've got something for you. See? But Ted, I'm... It's not an engagement ring. I mean, well, not right away. You can wear it on your right hand, and then if you change your mind, you can switch over to your left one. 
Ted, you're probably the nicest person I ever met, but... Oh, I know there's someone else, but I thought if I threw my hat in the ring, you might look my way. But don't you see, Ted, for five years now, Mr. Dawson and I... Mr. Dawson? Is he the one Why, yes, I... I thought you knew. Well... I guess you two been having quite a few laughs then. Oh, no, Ted, I know. Well, I'll leave you alone. You can really have a good one. Good night. Ted! His office is right down here, Doctor. You can examine him right away. I made the appointment. Fine. What's his name? Mr. Mitchell. Mitchell? It's not Frank Mitchell, is it? That's right, Doctor. I don't know why he keeps trying. I've had to turn him down twice. You have? Sure, high blood pressure. Once for Midwest and once for Cosmopolitan. You mean you don't think the policy will go through? Well, I wouldn't figure too much on my commission if I were you. But I've already spent it. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, son. But this has got to go through. A lot of nice people are depending on it. High blood pressure, huh? I knew a man once who... Say, Doc, come back in an hour, will you? What are you going to do? I've been trying the Dawson system long enough. Now I'm going to try my system. I'll see you in an hour. All right, son. Good morning. Good morning. You can go right in, Mr. Page. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Mitchell. Hello. Where's the doctor? Oh, he'll be along in a minute. Sorry I had to postpone this examination so many times. I've been terribly busy. My pill, please, Miss Harvey. Yes, sir. What's that for? It's my nerves. Helps me relax. I know a good way to relax. Uh, hmm? What do you take? Nothing. I, I just lean back and close my eyes. You ought to try it. Mr. Page, I'm a very busy man. Well, it won't do you any harm trying. Go on. Just lean against the back of the chair. Way back. Uh? Now, just let your head go around in a circle real slow like this. Doesn't it make you dizzy? No, no. It just loosens up the muscles. Try it. Well, <laughs> all right. That's fine. Just keep it going. That's fine. You like to fish, Mr. Mitchell? Oh, love to. Used to do a lot of it <laughs> when I was a boy. Uh, haven't done it for years, though. No time. Oh, that's too bad. Keep your eyes closed and your head just going around. Yeah. And now just imagine you're a kid again. Uh, you're sitting out in a little rowboat all by yourself. The water's quiet as midnight in a small town. It's clear and cold and you can see a school of perch swimming lazily around near the bottom. Of course, I realize you're busy, but after all, even a beaver can't keep going forever, and he knows it. Just keep your head going around, Mr. Mitchell. And then around October, the mornings begin to get as crisp as a soda cracker. And the wind comes sweeping across the fields, biting your cheeks and your ears. And before you know it, you wake up one morning and look out the window, and everything is white and still. The snow's deep and fresh and clean. I imagine it's lovely in spring, too. Yes. How are you coming along, Doctor? Taking the blood pressure. I'll be through in a minute. The spring, Mr. Mitchell. You've never seen so many different shades of green in your life. And all the trees that have been sad and drooping all winter slowly begin to bud. Oh, it's nice. Man, they begin to stand up straight as if they wanted to show they were proud they lived in Vermont. All right, I'm through. Well, doctor, what do you say? My boy, I don't know how you do it, but he's just past his physical. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Page. Where's Mr. Dawson? Is it something important, Mr. Yes, Page? I'd like to punch him in the nose, please. Is he in here? Wait, you can't go in now. Out of my way, please. Wait! And what's more, I'm quitting, do you hear? Oh, now, Claire. Get away from me! Now, wait a minute, darling. Don't forget I had a lot at stake, too. I don't care how much you had at stake. That's no excuse for making a mess out of his life. Will you please Say, let me explain? Say, she's no, defending me. She likes me. Mr. Page, Did will you, you please close the door? The Look. When they're all finished in there, will you tell Miss Harris to come downstairs? Tell her someone's waiting for her. Yes, sir, I will. So is he. You didn't think of that, did you? Oh, now, now, darling, it's not that serious. He'll get over it. Time heals all wounds. Well, we'll see what time will do to your bank account after the newspapers get a hold of this. Now, wait a minute, honey. You 
You, you wouldn't do a thing like that. You want to bet? Oh, now, darling, we're, we're both of us talking a lot of nonsense. How could you put a sweet guy in a spot like that? I didn't know he was going to buy a fire engine, did I? And what kind of a spot do you think I'm in? He believes I let him on and lied to him. He thinks I was in on it every step of the way. But, dear, I... I, I didn't realize you felt this way about it six weeks ago. Six you... weeks ago, I didn't feel a lot of things. Six weeks ago, I didn't know there were people like him. Why... He's the first real person I've ever met in my life. Wait a minute. Are you in love with this jerk? Yes, I am in love with him. And he's no jerk. You jerk. Goodbye. Uh, uh, wait, Claire. You can't walk out on me like this. Claire, come back here. Claire, Claire, come on back to the office and talk it over. Go away, I'm finished. Well, you might have told me before this. Here, I've been planning and planning. What, what am I supposed to do now? As Benjamin Franklin said... Go soak your head. Well. Oh! Claire! Hey, Claire, look. What in the name of... Tad, oh, Tad, you got the engine. It dries great. And they gave me the fire hat, too. How do you like it? Listen, Mr. Page. Oh, you look wonderful. Going my way, lady? Okay, Chief. Step on it. Come on. Claire, wait. You can't do this. What about the course? Claire, think of the Dawson Institute. The Dawson Institute announces a new course, ladies and gentlemen. Under personal supervision of Mr. Dawson himself, a new class is forming this week. Enroll now. Relax with Dawson. Now, class, just imagine your head is the second hand of a watch. <laughs> Let it go around and around, slowly... Slowly And imagine you're out in a boat All by yourself That's it As Benjamin Franklin so wisely said Relax And the world is yours <gasps> Our hats are off to the magnificent dope and to Henry Fonda, Donna Michi, and Lynn Barry for a trio of exciting performances. Thank you, C.B. Confidentially, though, it's a relief to have it over. Why, Don, I thought we had a grand time here this week. Oh, what Don means, Lynn, is that now when your friends ask you what you're playing and you won't have to say the magnificent dope. Yeah. I always told people that I wasn't the dope, that it was you, Hank. What did you tell them? <laughs> I said it was at the end of the picture. You turned out to be the dope. <laughs> That, that's magnificent buck-passing, Hank. How did you solve the great problem, Lynn? Well, I just told my friends that there were really two dopes in the picture, Hank and Don, and they were both in love with a very smart girl, and that's the part I played. Oh, that's fine, Hank. I think a certain very smart girl better think of a way out of this very fast. Well, naturally, every smart girl at a time like this would tell her friends about Lux Soap. CB, I leave it up to you. Well, it's only what your complexion deserves. I've used Lux soap for years, Mr. DeMille. Don, my hands are tied. Any Lux girl is a smart girl. <laughs> well, I'll settle for the news on next week's play, C.B. Hank, it's a scoop. The play is Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's comedy success, Love Crazy. And the stars are William Powell and Hedy Lamarr. <laughs> it's the story of a couple who plan a quiet celebration of their wedding anniversary, which quietly turns into one of the maddest adventures of the year. There's room for everyone on this merry-go-round with Hedy Lamar and William Powell next Monday night. Oh, that sounds swell, CB. We'll all be listening. Good night. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night. We sold us plenty of success tonight. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents... William Powell and Hedy Lamar in Love Crazy. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Don Amici, Henry Fonda, and Lynn Barry were heard tonight through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studio. Mr. Amici will soon be seen in the picture Girl Trouble. Mr. Fonda in Oxbow Incident and Miss Barry in China Girl. The picture, The Magnificent Dope, was based on the story by Joseph Schrank. 
Heard in tonight's play were Arthur Q. Bryan, Joe Latham, Eddie Marr, Bruce Payne, B. Benaderet, Verna Felton, Tori Carlton, Fred Mackay, Mary Raymond, Griff Barnett, and Lee Millar, Jr. Our Lux Radio Theater production of The Magnificent Dope has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, the beauty care that nine out of ten Hollywood stars use to help keep their complexions beautifully clear and smooth. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear Hedy Lamar and William Powell in Love Crazy. Don't let vitamin starvation lower your resistance, make you tired, nervous. Start now to take VIMS, the new vitamin mineral tablets. Your druggist is featuring a special trial offer of VIMS. Buy the $1.69 package, get the regular 50 cent size VIMS free. Get your free VIMS right away and get that VIMS feeling. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.